The microwave. <sighs> okay, children, for today's lesson, we're going to learn about the microwave oven. It's a very special appliance that people use to heat all sorts of different foods up. Oh, wow. Is there any chance that we could get heated up here? You'll find out about that, too, if you'll pay attention, of course. Whoa! Got it? Now listen carefully. I'm listening. I'm listening. Of course, young fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what Fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house, something that the Fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the Fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. And so now it's time to look at the magnetron. That's what emits the microwaves. Oh, and so the food absorbs the microwaves, and that's what heats it up. That's right. And now, look carefully to your left. What do you say? Want to watch cartoons? I can't. I need to do my homework. Then just do it quickly. For some reason, whenever I start doing homework, I always get hungry for some food. Then just eat faster. No. The faster I eat, the sooner I'll have to start doing my homework. Mmm, you already got cold. I need to go warm it up. One minute should be enough. These aren't just ordinary wires. These are for... Oh! Oh! Masya, what's going on? It looks like it might be an overload. The microwave might burn out. Then we better run out of here. What do you mean, run? with a microwave. It looks like it just broke. Who cares if it broke? What matters is that Simka and Masya aren't broken. Look, there's no one here. <laughs> of course not. We were <coughs> behind the wall. You wouldn't believe what happened in there. Oh, oh there you go. Tom Thomas, why did you put that fork into the microwave? Why not? You mean I'm not allowed? Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. Sorry, I didn't know any of that. Nolik, and what were you thinking? Why didn't you warn Tom Thomas about this? Hmm? Oh, I, uh... Oh, today you skipped school. And now you don't know it either. Nolik, where are you going? I'm talking to you. Huh, where else? I gotta go study all about microwaves. And I'll go do my homework now. But first you'll sit down and eat for a while, right? 
No, I'm not gonna eat food. First, I'll go and play some games for an hour or so. The hair dryer. Nolik, are you here? Yep, I'm here. I got a cool trick to show you. What? Oh. That was real magic, dude. Took long to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, uh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use a hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa! Yeah! I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. Probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hair dryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hair dryer and lifting you up to Nolik. So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. They can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hair dryer. Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. Hey! Hi there! Oh, Tom 
Thomas became a fixie. And that's my trick for you. Funny, huh? Oh, that's too funny. What a squeaky little voice you got there. <laughs> See, I'm already not a fixie. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> that's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs> the music box. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and <laughs> followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Suka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes gonna come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. 
With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas' mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. What is that? Oh my 
goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan. Run! The mixer. Masia, why are we going to the dishwasher again? We have a busy day ahead of us, and we all need to be charged up with energy. I don't like charging myself up in the dishwasher. Then how about the microwave, Nolik? Or the kettle? No, thanks. I don't like it when we go inside anything at all in that kitchen. There's not one interesting thing in there. And where's it interesting, huh? In the computer. Masia, will you let me get charged up in the computer? The energy there is sweeter. Our diet has to be nutritious, Nolik, not just delicious. People don't eat just candy, do they? Humans get energy from food, while the Fixies get their energy from appliances. Humans eat all sorts of foods, and so do Fixies. They need the energy that comes from different devices. Getting charged up in a car makes a Fixie faster. In a computer, smarter. And in a clock, more accurate. To get a balanced energy diet, Fixies mustn't stay inside of one place all the time like a television. It's healthier for us to move from one device to another. Good morning, Tom Thomas. <sighs> What's the matter? For breakfast, I got cereal with milk. Mom says that milk is so healthy, but I think it's just awful. Aha, uh -huh, Nolik, there you are. Go get charged right now. I'm not going. Look at Tom Thomas. He doesn't want to have breakfast either. Why don't you? Milk tastes awful to him. Tastes awful? He just doesn't know how to drink it right. Look what we've got here. What? What? A mixer. A mixer is a kitchen appliance that's used to mix together different foods. With a mixer, you can make things like frosting, sauces, or an omelet. But the most delicious thing you can make with a mixer is a milkshake. It's easy. Just put some fruit, syrup, juice, ice cream, or anything else you'd like into a container and then add milk. Now use the mixer to stir it all up until it's smooth and creamy. And that's it. You've got yourself a milkshake. Guys. What do we have for a milkshake? We've got a jar of jelly. Will it work? That'll work. And strawberry jam? That'll be great. Here's a banana. I found some chocolate, too. And I found strawberry ice cream. Start up the mixer. When you get up from your bed, e -yo, when you get up from your bed, open your favorite cereal. Make one more shake, just one. They were good. Sure, if you want to. Oh, 
Where did all the milk go? Way to go! Looks like you drank all of it. And I remember when you said how milk is awful. I didn't know how to drink it right. Simka, what in the world were you up to? And what happened to Nolik? Shh. Just come, I'll show you. Nolik, here you are. Didn't you say that charging up in the kitchen is boring for you? The mixer's not boring. It gives you energy that's yummy, delicious, and nutritious. The cell phone. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masi and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. <laughs> Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh. Not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give him a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call him, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> Oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is. Telephone is.
It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. <laughs> the flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? I think it's not working right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her, and that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the mac uh, uh, um, the pack mat and come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop talking. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh.
Chisaka, no! Get out, right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic yeah. deed. Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! Hooray! The compass. Pipe ball, hands on the deck. Aye, aye, mateys. Shiver me timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? With a map. And it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the north magnetic pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the south. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. 
And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. Whipped cream. <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm hmm. That sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries? With her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait for me! Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious, white, fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome. Bring it down. A little more. Perfect. Open it up. Chusaka, Chusaka. Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Whew. I'm so tired. I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter. 
I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical, extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right. Katya's bringing a cake, and she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The Magic Wand. How did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas? Your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Ah, oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden wish, Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden wish, Tadish! Hmm. Golden wish, Tadish! Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! Ah, ah! 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 Hey, Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly! Ah! Ah! for attacking helpless little kids. Wait, ah! I'll make you bigger now. Golden wish, Tadish. Ah! What, you scared? So you're only brave enough to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge. I'm as huge as Tom Thomas. I'm huge! Oh, no, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Ugh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. I was dreaming that 
someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do. Because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Uh. <gasps> Monsters! <laughs> hey! What do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. Mm -hmm. Tom 
Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find nightlights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a nightlight here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm going to be your nightlight. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, ugh. do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice, kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. <sighs> I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. The scale. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough already. But what if it's something important? Come on, she's just a dog. They say that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh, how could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh. I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's the scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? <laughs> if we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scale's pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka. Right, like she's going to come running. How are you going to get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I wear. This may be little, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. 
Her weight is two kilograms. <laughs> Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh, no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. Stop! What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm. All right. So, that's six cents. You still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way! How could she know it would rain? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? 